And what's happening here basically is when you remove the battery, we've removed the, the voltage from the battery, we removed that five volts, so it would seem like there's nothing to drive the current anymore, while to prevent the, that the current from falling down, the inductor steps in and creates its own induced five volts. So now the inductor is going to be on its own inducing the five volts just to keep the current going. And then it will gradually let the current ease down towards zero very slowly. And when we're down towards zero, there's no change to prevent anymore. So now it's going to be down, the inductor will be down at zero as well. So now the inductor is also for a short period acting like its own little battery. It's acting like its own little battery. By the way, what direction was the current flowing in this picture? Clockwise. And what direction, remember the inductor is going to prevent the current from going straight to zero, so what direction will the current be flowing in here? Um, that was a hard question, but remember the inductor prevents sudden changes in the current. That's not just magnitude, but also direction. There's no way if the current was going clockwise that the inductor is just going to let that jump to counterclockwise. The inductor is trying to keep things going the same way they were before. Just like it's trying to keep the, same, the current at the same level, it's going to try to keep the same direction. So the current direction in this picture will still be clockwise, except it'll get smaller and smaller and smaller until we get towards zero. Probably the reason you said counterclockwise was thinking of the analogy with the capacitor, but the logic is not the same here. In this case, the inductor wants to maintain the same movement. Remember that the capacitor was trying to always fight the battery. The capacitor was trying to get its positive charges back in the opposite direction. But this inductor here wants to continue doing what the battery was doing. It wants to continue doing what the battery was doing to prevent a sudden change. So we're going to continue going clockwise. So how are we going to observe that in this light bulb over here? When we remove the battery, what are we going to see happen to the light bulb over time? It's going to get dim. But only gradually. If there was no inductor, it would go straight to black when we remove the battery. Usually when we cut the power, things go straight to black. But that wouldn't happen if there was inductors. The inductor would slow that change. Again, we can see the inductor is preventing a jump in the voltage. I'm sorry, the inductor is preventing the jump in the current. But the only way it can do that is by allowing the jump in the voltage. After all, in this picture, the voltage was down at zero. And now something has to jump all the way up here again. So you can only prevent one jump. What's the equation for this graph? Um, the mass, um, the mass times one minus, oh, sorry. Now this, oh, no, you're right. I thought you made a mistake, but I missed. They're both asymptotic decreases. OK, that's, I think, um, some important things to understand about capacitors and inductors. A capacitor resists a jump in voltage, which means it has to allow a jump in current. And its purpose is to store energy that you can then use later. And the inductor resists jumps in current. So it has to allow jumps in voltage. So it prevents the current from moving straight to its destination. Instead, the current has to move asymptotically towards its destination. The reason why this is difficult for students to learn is they don't realize that there's two different cases. In both cases, there's kind of a charging case and a non-charging case. So you have to have both of those in your notes. And there's both the case for the inductor and for the capacitor. So I guess this is what we could call an RI circuit, you know, an RL circuit. It's got a resistor and an inductor. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.